I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are at the Fairhaven Cemetery in Santa Ana, California. And on today's show, we're going to do something just a little bit different. I have always had an interest in hearses. I think they're beautiful cars. I think they're honorable cars. So today, you're going to get a chance to see some of those cars and meet some of the owners and find out what it's like to drive a hearse, to be the owner of a hearse. So like I tell you every week, just kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. We have been lucky enough to connect up with the Phantom Coaches Hearse Club here in California. They're a great group of people who love hearses and have a real interest in maintaining them and, and educating people about hearses. Well, Robert Dean is standing next to me. He says his title within the club is Funeral Director, which is actually Activities Director. Is that right, Robert? Yes. So how, what's the history of the club? How did they come together? Uh, Phantom Coaches was formed in 1994, and we broke off from another club. Um, they kind of disintegrated. Mm -hmm. And you were able to, you put the word out, and, and everybody with a uh, hearse or a love for hearses, they all came together. And exactly, yeah. Everybody um, comes from all different types of uh, walks of life, and we have, like, one thing in common, our car. Uh -huh. What do you think it is about hearses? To some people, they just represent the end of life, and people don't even like to look at hearses, and other people see them as beautiful automobiles that are nicely designed that serve a very uh, honorable, important purpose. Where did the, the membership fall as far as that? Uh, we have people that are hardcore collectors and people that just like the ghoulie side of it, kind of, and there's other people like me who like the the, the custom-built aspect of it because they're all custom-built. Yeah, they are real quality automobiles. Right. The majority of the club, are they Cadillacs? Most of them are Cadillacs. We have some Pontiacs and a few Oldsmobiles. Why do you think it is that Cadillac captured the hearse market so successfully? It's the standard of the world. <laughs> They're the best. I understand there's a large following with other clubs for hearses, and here in California and probably all across the country, but there are shows that are just specifically, car shows specifically for hearses. Right, that's with the Professional Car Society. Yeah, they're all over the country. And professional cars, that includes hearses and limousines and flower cars. And ambulances. Well, Robert, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. We're going to talk to some of the other members, so thanks again. Paul Feely, I understand you have the honor of the title newest member. Is that right? That is right. That's correct. How did you end up in the Phantom Coaches Hearse Club? I knew about them for a couple of months, but I didn't want to join until I purchased my hearse. And you purchased the hearse how? Off of the Internet and... Uh, 1969 Cadillac. Is it difficult to find hearses? A little difficult, but a little perseverance paid off, and I found the one I wanted. And this particular one, uh, a little bit of custom work on this one. I see your paint job is kind of unusual. Yes, the, the previous owner, Liz, she was she did incredible work. I did a lizard skin type of uh, look and texture to the car. A lot of car clubs you join, and there are lots of events, lots of barbecues, lots of parties at people's houses. You travel together to car shows. Is that the way this club operates? Is it any different than any other car club just because it's a hearse club? No, it, it, it's like that. Sometimes they go to a casket factory, and that was a fun trip. I missed that one. I would have liked to have gone. But, uh, yes, they, they have events every month, and it's very, it's very rewarding to, to be a member. And you also mentioned that as you're cruising around, you get a lot of thumbs up, but you said uh, your word was sneers. Occasionally you get sneers from people. Always gets a reaction. Uh, occasionally people look funny at me, but a lot of the times people cheer and wave to me. I'm, I'm very happy for that. What kind of reaction from children? They think it's cool. They think it's neat. I never, I've yet to receive a negative reaction from a child. Uh, children always uh, respond very positively to the vehicle. The performance on these, are they cars that they're good at, at cruising at highway speeds, but the, because of the weight or alterations, the acceleration is not that great? Or are they equal to just a, a sedan, an unaltered sedan? What, how's the performance on Cadillacs and uh, hearses in general? They're all big block engines. Uh, this is a 472. Um, I would say they're great for cruising. The only downside was terrible gas mileage. The interior on these, I would think because of the limited use, they you buy one and a lot of miles on it perhaps, but the interior is still in great condition? Usually they're still in pretty good condition. They're unique interiors because they'll have 
things such as black lace, which you'll not see on any other vehicle. I think the preference is to acquire the vehicles uh, from a professional service rather than a private order, owner because you can count on the vehicle having been better maintained, better service. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to yeah. talk to us. This is uh, great. Love your outfit. Great outfit. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
As I've alluded to earlier in the show, a lot of the people that are in the Phantom Coaches Hearst Club and in this body of people that enjoy cars of this type, there are a lot of people with great senses of humor. Well, we obviously have one here with Dave Cash. Dave, you're, you're having real fun with it. Oh, I love this. This is, uh, this is the best car that you could drive and uh, really enjoyment. And your friend here, what's his name? This is Andy. And Andy's not doing real well. He has a, a tag on him that says uh, deceased. So uh, has Andy been enjoying? I see he has some, some pretty fancy accessories here. Well, absolutely. Uh, he, uh, he enjoys to watch a movie now and then, so he's got some horror movies to play in the background, and uh, he has a sense of humor about it as well. You obviously have gone to some effort to have some fun with this, so where do you take this that you can get full impact of your uh, display here? Uh, I really enjoy taking this out to uh, car shows. I, uh, I get to take it to car shows all over Southern California. And uh, to see the reaction on people's faces when they come around the corner, you know, the first thing is, oh, it's a, it's a hearse. And then as they look around, they see Andy watching the movie, uh, they get a smile on their face, and it's uh, really a kick. You mentioned earlier when we were talking about uh, use in movies of these, and you've, you've been able to do that. You rent some of these out yourself? Yeah, I do. I, uh, I rent it out for uh, uh, movie shoots and television. I uh, also do uh, rentals to uh, for parties, over-the-hill parties, and things of that nature occasionally. So uh, I get to share the enjoyment with others. And what's the name of your uh, company? Uh, Grave Rides Hearse Rentals. So having fun with this, going on the various cruises and the car shows, what is the, the best thing you can do? What's the most fun th thing you can do as a hearse owner? I uh, really enjoy going out with the club. Uh, we get a lot of different personalities that get to mingle, and that's a kick. But uh, just the reactions of, of people as, uh, as they approach you on the freeway, and, uh, and hopefully they won't run into you as they're staring. So. Well, that that is a problem on, at times. You know, people they'll start to rubberneck, and uh, yeah, they'll you got to watch because they'll drift in your lane and they get so into it. So, yeah. well, Dave, thank you very much for being on the show. This is a uh, great car and a great display. Thank you very much. Ariel and Otto Baron are nice enough to share their 1959 Cadillac limousine with us, and. Uh, as you may recall, the movie Ghostbusters had a 1959 Cadillac. I would think that within the collector and custom car world, 59 Cadillacs are way up towards the top in desirability and just overall uh, really cool cars. Within the Hearst community, does that hold true for 59s? I think it does. Um, the 59 demands a premium price. And Ariel, what's it like riding around in this? Oh, it's actually pretty nice. People ask me during Halloween, can we rent this or can we take a picture in front of this? But it's pretty nice. So does your dad ever drop you off at school in this? Well, once or twice. If somebody was considering getting into the hearse hobby, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Find one in really good repair. Most important, find one that doesn't need a lot of work. Um, unless you're prepared to spend a lot of money, you can spend a fortune trying to bring these cars back to drivable condition. Mm -hmm. Me, I wanted a 59 specifically, so I was willing to go through all that, but um, if you just want a car you can enjoy, buy one that's already in good shape, already fixed up. And preferably one built before 77. That was the last year of the long wheelbase. I've always preferred these pre-77 hearses because they were just longer, lower, and they were better proportioned. In 1977, they downsized the chassis, and um, they just started, today's are nothing more than chopped up passenger cars. Well, Ariel and Otto, thank you very much for being on the show. It's a pleasure having you on. And thank you very much. Ronnie Grubbs, your 1988 Cadillac is pretty cool, a little different color than the rest of them. I understand that you are the person to come to if somebody wants to purchase a hearse. Yes, I buy and sell, rent them out for movie studio rentals, uh, parties, uh, special occasions. How did you get into the hearse buying and selling business? Mm, kind of started off as an accident. Uh, my brothers wanted a hearse after I bought my first one. So I found my brother a hearse, found my cousin a hearse, my other brother a limousine. Then he's more choice so I call me, hey, my buddy's got more cars to sell. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll buy some more and just resell them and kind of took off. <laughs> are they generally in pretty good shape, low mileage, good condition? Um, some are really clean and some are like, I can't believe you guys are still using this car. It's just total mess. But normally they're pretty good condition. I get them right out of service. I very rarely buy from my private party. 
As a daily driver, I would think comfort-wise they'd be pretty practical, but perhaps what, what kind of mileage do you get on these? Uh, we don't talk about mileage, we talk about the ride. <laughs> no, actually this one did us pretty good. We got about 18 to 22 with this one. Well, that's great. Got the smaller engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not the most powerful car, but that's pretty good. So you've had er, across the gamut, every, old, young, male, female, uh, rich, poor, everybody's buying these? Yes. They're starting to be recognized as a collectible uh, coach-built car. And plus, people have always wanted them since I was like, since they were a kid. They go, man, my wife's going to finally, finally let me have a hearse. So they find me and we talk and we, we do business. Is there anything, a, a common denominator that you see in the people that purchase these? Um, it's always been their fantasy, but they're afraid to tell anybody because they're afraid to be looked at as like, why and what's wrong and who's this guy? When somebody confronts you with that, why on earth would you sell these or why would you drive them? What's your answer? Look at it. Look at every other car in the parking lot. They all look the same. I can go to the parking lot, I can find my car. Insurance is cheaper. Theft rate's cheap on most of them. I love them. They're great. They're, co they're comfortable. And the quality of the building, because they're all custom made, correct? Right. right. Each one is b built to order. Ronnie, thank you very much. Uh, good luck in, well. in your business. <laughs> thanks, Ronnie. Okay, thanks. Brit and Holly Griffiths is a pretty cool ride that you have here, and I really like the flames. They're subtle, but they're pretty nice. How, how did that come about? <laughs> I wanted flames. I just, I've always wanted a car with flames on it, and so I told him if he's going to get a paint job, it's got to have flames. How long have you two been together? Nine years. Has this been a desire for a long, until you got one? Did you want a hearse, or did one of you have to sell the other one on the idea? Actually, we do a Halloween party every year. About 400 people come to it, and uh, Ronnie Grubbs has always loaned us hearses for it. And finally, one year, I decided we're just going to buy one so we didn't have to hassle Ronnie. And uh, I figured it would sit in the driveway most of the time. I drive it every now and then just to keep her moving. But I had so much fun driving it. I said, I'm going to drive this all the time, and I'm going to do it right. So a little bit, uh, little bit kind of hot, Roddy, with the uh, flames on here, a little bit unusual. Do you, from the general public, it's a hearse. You get a certain reaction. But does a custom car, when you go to a car show, does, does this draw maybe a little more than another hearse might because it has the flames? Well, up against the 59. No, absolutely not. Everybody goes for the fins. But I have watched, we have sat back and watched people walk by all the 50-something Chevys, whatever you want to call them, all souped up. And they'll go right by them to this thing first. And most of the hearses in general, they'll go right by them, check our stuff out first, and then they'll go back to the show. Do I see a couple of uh, child seats in the back? Yes, you do. Yeah. And how old are the children that ride in it? They're 17 months. And they have, as far as they know, it's just this giant car. They have a blast in it. They like riding in this better than her Xterra. Do they like to play in the back of it? Oh, yeah. They, they were playing in there earlier. They were, you know, in the front seat playing with the steering wheel. And they just, they, you know, they've got a great view. It's a great playpen and everything else. So. But the looks on people when we pull up to the grocery store or whatever, we, of course we pull up in a hearse and people are like, what the heck is that doing here? And then you open the back and you pull your kids out. It stops people in their tracks, and they have to watch. If somebody wanted to buy a hearse, what's the, the first piece of advice you would give them? Call Ronnie Grubbs. <laughs> Call Ronnie Grubbs. Ronnie Grubbs is going to be getting a bill for the commercial on this show. I think I actually have a swim right here. You want me to get that out for you? Uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be right with you. Thanks a lot for being on the show. Thank you. Charlene and Otis Jackson, what a pretty car. 1971 Cadillac hearse? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Beautiful car. Has it gone through a restoration? Uh, actually, no. It has been, re been repainted and had certain work done to it, but the car has not been totally restored. And the background on this one is? Well, uh, the background is uh, it was owned since new by a funeral home in Grants Pass, Oregon. And uh, they drove the car for 30 years, and uh, I got it from a hearse broker in Burbank in 2001. Mm -hmm. They finally replaced it in 2001. Charlene, uh, what do you like best about having a hearse in your family? Uh, probably going on cruises and then watching the people like go, what the? <laughs> Did your dad take you and your, your girlfriends to school in this or any events? No, but once once in a while we go to Bob's and he'll let me occasionally bring friends and things like that. You mentioned that late at night cruising in this, sometimes you get kind of odd reactions. Uh, yeah, uh, people seem to react more to the car at night than they do during the daytime. 
And uh, that's really the most fun that I have with it is boulevard cruising at night. I, uh, I live in Woodland Hills, California, and I'm fairly close by Hollywood and the Sunset Strip, so I go down there quite frequently on Saturday, Friday, or Saturday nights just to get a little reaction. But, hey, we never grow up. I, I live fairly near a country club. And uh, they put the signs when they're having parties there down on the main gate of the name of the party that is having the party. And sometimes I'll take that name and I'll drive up to the rotunda to the parking valets and tell them that I have a pickup call for the name that I saw down on the gate. And when they take off to go get the people and I see them go into the club, I hop into the car and just quietly disappear around the corner. So that's just the little gag that I play for fun. So, uh, Party of Jones, your hearse is here, that's what's going on in there? Yes. <laughs> uh, Charlene, uh, is there a hearse in your future when you turn 16? Are you going to save up all your money and, and buy one, you think? Oh, no, I'm taking this one. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's a, it's a beautiful car. If you could give advice to any uh, of the children of, of grown-ups who want a hearse out there, what would that advice be? Yeah, it's a lot of fun having one, and you get to do a lot of different things with it. Well, it's been fun talking to both of you. Thank you very thank much for being on nice. the show. Very nice talking with you. All right. Thank you, Charlene. Welcome. Well, I'll expect to see you drive off in this car now, okay? Thank you very much for tuning in to today's show. We'd like to thank the Phantom Coaches Hearst Club for their cooperation. We'd like to thank the Fairhaven Cemetery here in Santa Ana. What a great time we've had. We've seen some wonderful cars. We've met some nice people. It's really been fun. So to all of you, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. So until then, bye-bye.